Your hypothalamus is what talks to the pituitary gland, and the pituitary gland is what sends out FSH and LH. Both your hypothalamus and your pituitary gland are in your brain, and your hypothalamus is really that control center, interpreting the signals from all over your body, and then sending out information in the pituitary to say release FSH or release LH or not. Well, in hypothalamic amenorrhea, the hypothalamus is interpreting some signal that it's not a great time to send out FSH or LH, and it's telling the pituitary gland not to do it. This can actually be structural sometimes. You can have like a brain tumor that can actually physically interfere with the process. But the vast majority of the time is something called functional hypothalamic amenorrhea or FHA. And this is from stress. And now I know stress can be a buzzword, but often it's true physiologic stress. So it can be chronic illness, it can be under eating, over exercising. It can be from psychological stress, but for whatever reason, the brain is getting these high stress signals that your body's not at a great place to be pregnant. Therefore, it's going to protect you. Your brain's trying to keep you alive. This is wired from the days of, let's say, starvation. If you were living in a famine and there's no food available, your caloric intake goes down, your body doesn't want you to have to get pregnant because it won't be able to support the nutritional needs of a pregnancy. So it shuts off the ability to get pregnant by not sending out FSH and LH. And your brain is protective over you the most. So it takes years of seeing an appropriate caloric need for the brain to turn back on. Under eating or starvation diets, anorexia, over-exercising, this is a huge reason why we see hypothalamic amenorrhea right now. Officially, this can be diagnosed by having low LH and FSH levels, a low estrogen, and in the context of having no periods. Well, just like you can have hypothalamic amenorrhea, I often talk about hypothalamic dysfunction, where the brain is really close to going into amenorrhea, but maybe it's not there yet. Think about the brain like a dimmer switch. It is not happy, but it's not all the way shut off. So it's getting these stress signals for a variety of reasons, and it is not sending out enough FSH or LH. And this can frequently present with that short luteal phase or some ovulation abnormalities. So maybe it's not as extreme as having no periods at all or having irregular cycles, but you are having subtle changes in your cycles and changes in your ovulation pattern directly from the brain not wanting to send out a strong enough signal. So hypothalamic dysfunction is another thing that we can see. We also see the thyroid gland and the pituitary both play a really important role. So the pituitary sends out a hormone called prolactin, and this is known as the lactation hormone. So if you're breastfeeding, your prolactin will be high. And typically, outside of breastfeeding, your prolactin should be pretty low. But you can have an elevation of prolactin, and what prolactin does is when the pituitary gland Really interestingly, the pituitary gland has hormones on different areas. It's mapped. So think about it as a storage facility for your different hormones. And prolactin lives really close to our LH and FSH are. So when the pituitary is real busy in making prolactin and sending it out, it is not sending enough blood supply or attention to FSH and LH, and your body will stop sending those out. A very fascinating study was done looking at women who had high prolactin and what you see is as the prolactin gradually increased you saw a very specific pattern of ovulation disorders reflecting the spectrum or the continuum of what we see in cycle abnormalities so when prolactin was low you saw very normal regular predictable cycles as it started to rise you saw a luteal defect so your cycles were still regular but maybe they were shorter together and you saw that short luteal phase as prolactin got even higher, you started to have a long follicular phase and now longer cycles than irregular cycles. And at highest levels, you had true amenorrhea. And as prolactin was treated and went lower, you saw the regression through all of those cycle abnormalities. So this is a hormone that we always wanna check if you're having irregular periods. Sometimes it can be from a pituitary tumor called a prolactinoma, which sounds scary, but is typically treated just with medication. There's other things that can raise your prolactin. Common one can be medications used for mental health disorders or for ADHD or even some GI meds. So always go over your medication list with your doctor if they do a test and your prolactin is high. Many people don't have symptoms of high prolactin, but you can. One of the most common would be what we call galacteria, which is spontaneous lactation. 
But true concerning signs and what we're worried about is if you could have a pituitary tumor, you might be in a position where you start having headaches or vision changes, specifically tunnel vision. And those are very strong warning signs that you wanna go get an evaluation right away, especially if you're having headache and period changes. Now, thyroid disease is much more prevalent and commonly known. Your thyroid gland is a butterfly-shaped gland that is in the neck, and the thyroid responds to a hormone from the pituitary gland called TSH. TSH, thyroid-stimulating hormone, tells the thyroid gland to make thyroid hormone. And your thyroid hormones, T3 and T4, are essential to every cell in your body for metabolic functions. Well, your brain is interpreting if you're getting enough T4 and T3, and it's sending out more or less TSH in response. So hypothyroidism is going to be one of the most common, and this is where your brain doesn't see enough T3 and T4, so they're low, and so it's sending out an increase in TSH, which would then be high, trying to get the thyroid gland to make more. And because the thyroid gland is really responsible for metabolism, when we see abnormal levels, we often will see menstrual changes as well. In addition to things like temperature irregulation, weight changes, mood changes. So your thyroid does a ton in your body and hypothyroidism is gonna be the most common type. You would see weight gain, feeling cold, losing hair, and having abnormal irregular periods. So we always wanna screen your thyroid when you have abnormal cycles as well. You also can find that we see cycle changes when you start to have low ovarian reserve or ovarian failure. Remember that you're born with all the eggs you're ever going to have. I like to envision them as kept in a vault inside that ovary and every month you have a different group come out. Well, the number of eggs you have sent out of the vault correlates with how many you have remaining. So in PCOS, when there's a lot of eggs in the vault, a lot come out every month. But as you start to run out of eggs and the vault decreases, you have fewer eggs coming out every month. Well, the brain doesn't know this, so it sends out its normal signal of FSH, and that gets an egg to respond faster. So that FSH is now not dilute, you see a shorter time to ovulation and an overall shortening of your cycle. Well, as the ovary has fewer and fewer eggs, the ovary gets really stubborn. And so what it then starts to do is it doesn't wanna respond. And the brain has to send out more FSH to get even a single egg to respond. So you will see an increase in FSH needed to get a response. And then eventually the ovary will stop responding altogether. The brain will be sending out all the FSH that it has and the ovary won't do anything. And that is considered ovarian failure or menopause. Even though the average age of menopause is going to be 51, 52, many women can have low ovarian reserve earlier. And I've had women even in their teenage years who are in ovarian failure. So it's not something that can't happen. And understanding your cycle or picking up some of these cycle changes have absolutely changed the game for my patients if they're trying to get pregnant. So if you are trying to evaluate your egg count, we often are looking at AMH, which is a hormone made from all the cells surrounding each follicle, but also FSH and estradiol can be really important in understanding this. I once had a patient who came off the birth control pill. She was in her mid twenties and she was ready to get pregnant. And she had had some irregular cycles as a teen, but really wasn't that worried about it, was very happy on the pill. And then when she stopped the pill, never had a period again. So she came to see me to work up her amenorrhea or absence of periods. And what we actually found out at that time is that her egg count was so low that she was almost in ovarian failure. Well, we were able to give her medication and help her get pregnant, but we had to fast track everything, which took her way by surprise. And it turns out that she had a genetic condition which was causing this. And knowing that information allowed her to screen her daughter later. She got pregnant with one daughter naturally and one she needed donor eggs. So there's a lot of different ways to have a family, but it's really important that she at least came and got help. Actually, the first person she went to told her, oh, it's normal to not have a period this long after stopping the pill and to just keep waiting, which is so frustrating to me. Truly, the birth control pill is very short acting and you should have a period back by three months at the latest. And if you haven't by then, you should go get a workup to see what is going on. And that holds especially true if you are having periods while you are on the pill. There's no reason why it should take you three months to ovulate again afterward. So don't be afraid to go see a doctor if your cycle is off. You're not being overly dramatic or you're not making a big deal out of nothing. Your period, your cycle is a vital sign and understanding it is giving you crucial information about your body that really impacts your hormonal health now and how you feel in the future. 
And really importantly, remember that if you're on any type of hormonal contraception, you're just getting a hormone withdrawal bleed. You're not getting a true period. You can't use your period as a vital sign if you're on hormonal contraception. That doesn't mean that all hormonal contraception is bad, but it does mean we wanna take that in mind and think about stopping it before we wanna get pregnant with enough time to detect our regular period pattern back before we want to conceive. 